We had some uh, homework for this week, but I have to say that um, that was not expected by everybody. Uh, there are some of you who have been in the the um, the uh, firstborn class for a while, <clears throat> and others who were in the uh, First Peter class that have recently joined us, and those who are were in the first Peter class that have recently joined us and not have really been following the, the uh, sharings on the firstborn, you're not really required uh, for that homework or whatever. Now, if you have something from the Lord, man, we want to hear it, that's for sure. But um, uh, so uh, I think that we will uh, just kind of start with that. Uh, instead of turning on your video, though, um, if you would just, because we're in my home and my home doesn't have all the power and the juice that uh, the, that other person <coughs> has. And so um, uh, if you just turn on your microphone, if you care to share um, and feel free to go ahead, because I'm just going to wait on you. And the good news is, is we've had the train, the big truck go by, and, and uh, an, an ambulance. So now it's silent. <laughs> All right, we have... Uh, Kelly's going to share first. Okay. Um, well, I hope you all can hear me. I'll talk really loud, and we have another ambulance. <laughs> oh, glory to God. But um, I was thinking about in the beginning of the corridor of suffering, you see that your soul needs saved because of how it's reacting to the evildoers and the lions and the crisis. And so the verses that I uh, saw that in in regards to um, Elohim and Adonai was in Micah. Micah chapter 7 verses 1 through 6 establishes, and you'd have to read it for sake of time, that there's absolutely no flesh that isn't really the evildoer. There's just nothing to hope for. There's no salvation in the strength or the righteousness of the flesh. So in Micah chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Therefore, I will look unto Yahweh, but I will wait for the Elohim of my salvation. My Elohim will hear me. And so he's looking up to Elohim and the Father's relationship with his Son, the Son that's inside of him, even though his soul needs saving, and that the Father will, by the Spirit, bring forth that Son so that he can go through that corridor of suffering, save that soul, and bring forth glory to the Father through that man who has nothing in him that can do it. And um, I have more, but I could stop. Well, let's see if we got anybody else. Okay. <clears throat> um, one of, the, one of the things that probably should be shared with those of you who are just recently joining the firstborn class <clears throat> is that we have discovered uh, something that, or, or I have, if you will, I think, I think we is a good word, but personally I have discovered uh, an aspect of the sufferings of Christ that First Peter talks about that... Um, is um, relates to one of the persons of the Godhead. And it is that spirit of uh, being kind of a caregiver over the weak ones, over the ones who are going through uh, the sufferings of Christ. And uh, we knew God was, I mean, all this sharing that I've done thus far, we knew God was in general, um, overseeing that, and and he also had his son in us, um, and um, w those things we understood. <clears throat> but what we're adding to that, and and then th I'm trying to say this to help you when people refer to this name for God called Adonai. That's the name of the one. That is the. Um, <clears throat> I would say it's an official name of that of one of the Godhead 
that would be standing on their behalf as well as dealing with whatever evildoers had done to them when the time comes for that. <clears throat> so anyway, with that in mind, now listen and consider uh, that, uh, that corridor where, where the sufferings of Christ are. We had it a red corridor on the, on the, the screen, but uh, where the sufferings are the most severe, but where we find the Lord also most clearly. Um, so it's, it's, you know, that I wanted to give that to you because it's important as we hear from different people. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to share? Um, I can, if that's okay. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I was just looking at First Peter, and I guess the one thing I noticed after looking at it and talking about Elohim and everything is how Peter was so defined with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Like, like he was he was very specific. It wasn't just a lot of the Lord or something like that. He would be very specific about how what part each part of the Godhead was playing in it. And I don't have something like super spiritual or anything, but uh, the Lord the Lord showed me First uh, Peter three verse eighteen. For Christ hath also suffered, or for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And so I guess I just thought of that as like, the sufferings of Christ were all, the sufferings of Christ was like the whole of God, each working in a different facet to bring us to the Father. Nice. And, I mean, that's pretty much all I was thinking, but, yeah. Amen. Yeah, I, you know, I love those scriptures. I always have for way, way, way back <clears throat> because um, it literally says, and and uh, um, First Peter will have that in a couple of other places also, where it will actually bring out, which we didn't get to it in the, the First Peter class up to this point, because there's so many things to cover in advance, but, but it actually brings out the fact that going into those sufferings is not just about you or the person that's going into them um, with the Lord, it, with number one, with the nature of Christ, but also with the Lord in spirit to glorify the Father. So there's glory to the Son as we, uh, I'll just say it like this, get out of the way, and then glory to the Father as the Son is able to bring forth that right spirit, um, that Lamb spirit, uh, if, if you will, that weakness spirit, <clears throat> so that others might be brought to God. Now we see that, we understand that with Jesus, we know he died for sinners. But guess what? Uh, while it's not, it's not redemptive in that sense, it's not also not us in that sense though. It's Christ in us that's doing it. So it's not like we're redeeming anybody or doing it. But, um, but what it is, is that uh, in that we go through that and we go through that in the right spirit, the evildoers that are bringing about the sufferings and maybe others, they also have a chance of being, of coming to God because of that. And I just think that's a, one of the beautiful things that we, we haven't touched on yet in First Peter um, that is really, really so precious. And then kind of addressing one of the things that, that you, you shared, Isaac, was that, you know, you were noting um, the the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit throughout that. <clears throat> and uh, we've come to designate uh, that as Elohim because, uh, and this wasn't brought forth in that class either, um, but we've, we've done that because 
when the scriptures began in Genesis, in the beginning, God, that was Elohim. And God, Elohim, created this. And, and God said it was good, Elohim. And, and then God, Elohim, created this and da-da-da-da. And it goes all the way down until it gets to man. And then it says, and God said, let us make man in our own, our own image after our likeness. And that was, that's showing that Elohim is the three in one. Now, um, there's, a, there's an interchange that we're going to get into more with this uh, Adonai thing. But um, there's an interchange that can, can rotate within that. Uh, as far as how God is moving and acting depending on the other parts. And um, so it was really, that's really good that you've you identified that because it really is a, a part of that. But I think it's understood even more for those who've been in the um, firstborn class because that's what we've been emphasizing is Elohim and Adonai and particularly trying to show forth Adonai within the Trinity. <clears throat> Another word for Elohim is the Trinity or the Godhead or, you know, the words like that. Anyway, it was really good. And thank you. Thank you for sharing. Amen. Okay, someone else. Am I on? You are on. <laughs> hey, uh, well, I thought we were looking for Elohim. So, so I went looking for Elohim, but I kind of found maybe both. And I don't know why I ended up in First Peter, because I've been following the, the firstborn uh, class, but I was, you know, this scripture, that scripture, <laughs> but lo and behold, I'm in First Peter. So anyway, the very first chapter uh, where he's, he's making his address, and it's the second verse, and it says, elect. And this, the idea of the elect I'm seeing in that, that verse is, is a result of Elohim because it's according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. He had this in his, in his mind already, uh, but through sanctification of the Spirit uh, and, uh, and unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so you have all three of them kind of working together. But I also see there's kind of a, and that's kind of the salvation thing that uh, I thought I would kind of uh, say, I'm seeing the same thing Kelly saw uh, concerning the Elohim working for salvation, but also Adonai, because this is the foreknowledge of God the Father. This is when they're all together, and it's in his mind and they're all together this is before anything's happened but it gets set into motion with each of them you know having their role to play and and to do but uh, but had to be uh, in existence within all of them because it was the foreknowledge of God the Father anyway that's it <clears throat> well just so you know, both you and Isaac have been right on because in truth, at the, at the beginning of, or the end of class last week, I think, or whenever I did it, um, I was really talking about matching up Elohim with First Peter um, because uh, most of our people that are coming over from, from uh, the First Peter class had never really heard the truth yet of, of Adonai and wouldn't really, I, and possibly wouldn't know how to apply that. <clears throat> but I got so many texts and emails and calls that, well, did you make a mistake? Were you talking about Adonai? Because I had made a mistake before on this front. So I just went with it. But really, I mean, for both of you guys, um, that's, that was the first part because you can't talk about Adonai until Elohim or the Trinity is clearly established. And uh, so Isaac, you know, r referred to that throughout the whole book. 
and then you brought it up. And this is kind of what I was wanting, but I'm open to, and, and I know that many have done, you know, more search or whatever now on Adonai, which is fine. Um, but it's good that we, we got Isaac and, and Mike Gentry here uh, uh, to set some, set the stage for us to begin to draw out Adonai within the Trinity and identify what that means. So it's really good. Thanks, Mike. Good to hear your voice. <clears throat> All right. Anyone else? I, sh I found something on um, the sufferings of Christ and Adonai. Um, specifically, I was trying to draw a connection in the story in Genesis 18 to the reality of um, looking to Adonai in the sufferings in 1 Peter. So that's kind of what I was looking at. And I don't know if this is right, but this is just kind of what jumped out or kind of emerged to me. Over in 1 Peter 4.19, it says... Um, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And that's taking the position of God as Adonai because we're committing ourselves to him as our, he, he, he formed us not only physically but our insides for his son to live in us. So he's created us to go through these sufferings according to his will. And so we look to him as Adonai especially when we do it in a right spirit, because then we're really putting ourselves under his care because there's going to need to be a resurrection or life come forth because we can't protect ourselves if we're going to go through in a right spirit. But then over in Genesis 18, I was looking at the story of um, Sarah in the tent and Elohim, whom Abraham called Adonai, telling Abraham that they are going to have a son. And Sarah laughs because she's listening in. And that word laugh is the same word that is, is used for Ishmael when he mocks Isaac. It's the same Hebrew word. So Sarah's spirit, she's not just laughing. Sarah's spirit is completely wrong. To her, she has not put herself in a position for Elohim to be Adonai because she's mocking the Lord's words. So even though she belongs to the Lord and she's supposed to be coming under him as Adonai because she's barren, she is now an evildoer. And she's put, she is now, she is the evildoer that the Lord has to lay down his life for. You know, she's supposed to be the one in need because she's barren. So that really struck me deeply. And I don't know if how much I can, I understand this next part, but the next part of 18 Abraham begins to intercede for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And every time he asks the Lord to lower the number of souls uh, that he commit to judgment, um, he says, Adonai. And the Lord yields every time. And just his spirit um, was just completely different than Sarah's. So that was one thing I noticed. Amen. Really good. <clears throat> really good. And, and, uh, that is clearly using uh, the things we've been looking at in the in the firstborn class and able to match them up with the ideas and the things that uh, Peter's trying to bring out in first Peter. And that was really kind of my purpose was I was, you know, hoping that we would do this and we are. Uh, everybody's everybody's doing that really well. I mean, this is the firstborn class and we're hearing a lot shared out of first Peter. <clears throat> Um, just one thought, and, I, and one of the things I have to tell you is there are some things that I haven't shared yet on Adonai, but there is, I, I believe that there's so much to this, to that, that office, if you will, I don't have the right word for it, but placement when the time comes for whoever that would be among the, the Trinity, <clears throat> that, um, uh, that I don't. I mean, I know there's just a bunch yet that I don't know. But one of the things that I've been kind of <clears throat> seeing is that um, Adonai, whoever that is, Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, um, will, will primarily be there or will sh at least show up. Now, uh, Mallory, you just shared a good example of he was there. He was meant to be her Adonai, but uh, 
she didn't have the right spirit and therefore we I have to say this therefore he's not her Adonai and maybe Jehovah now steps in and is going to oversee this thing <clears throat> because if she's a uh, if she's an evildoer then on one front so but but the thing that I was I want to bring out is <clears throat> that Adonai is, is different than just God in general God in general will will deal with um, robbers or you know all the all these rank sins and stuff but Adonai is particularly related to first Peter or, or if you will the sufferings of those who become w willing weak they have willing weakness meaning they're not just poor and destitute period um, they may be poor and destitute, period, but they choose to, to still be with him. But, I, but we're talking about like Jesus, who, was the, who had all power and all, you know, whatever. Um, he could have called 10,000 angels, but he was willing weak, weakness and working within him. And therefore, the Father or the Holy Spirit was his Adonai. And... Um, uh, and but it, like in the case of Sarah, if she backs out of that relationship or disrespects, because a huge part of of relating to Adonai is in relationship to respecting him as that, as we go into deeper weakness, that he might bring, that he might be the strength, not just the strength giver, but he might be the strength. So um, anyway, that was really good. It was really good, Mallory. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, it's Sharon. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm just picking up where everybody left off, but Mike in particular read that scripture, First Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Elect. Elect for what? What have we been elected for? And then I'll jump over to um, chapter 2, verse 21. For to this you were called, um, yeah. because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. But just above verse 21, at verse 18, uh, Peter starts off with servants. Be submissive to your Adonai, you know, to your masters. Um, with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh, for this is commendable. And, you know, what credit is it if you're beaten for your faults and you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God, before your Adonai, you know, your master. And then it says, for, to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us. So I'm just seeing... Um, that that is what we have been elect to. It's, it's called sanctification of the Spirit and obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Christ, which speaks of his death. So I just kind of married those two passages. To me, Adonai means my master, you know, not my will, but your spirit, your way. Um, and Peter says right here, to this, you have been called. Yes. So that's that's what I was putting together there, with just really everything that everyone else has said. Amen. Well, and that's what we want to hear tonight. Um, and uh, you know, y'all know this from First Peter, but the the calling there is that he's talking about going into this the sufferings of Christ. He's talking about not just going into them, but going into them in a right spirit, which would be the Lamb which would be the lamb nature, which would be uh, to not, uh, you know, speak back or justify or do all these things. <clears throat> and um, uh, so that's that the that calling is right, as we say here in Texas, smack dab in the middle of 
uh, being in a relationship with one of the one of the Trinity uh, Elohim as your Adonai. Now, another interesting thing that I found, <clears throat> um, which uh, we haven't shared on, was my searching, and I have pretty much, I think I have in, in my iPad, on a list, for example, uh, every use of um, the word um, Adonai, and the word Adon, A-D-O-N, which is small letters, okay? And Adonai is capital. Adonai always refers to God, either the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But Adon actually is a word that is only used for people like what you said, Sharon, masters, this or that. Uh, I, I believe that if, if the, the New Testament hadn't been translated into Greek or whatever, it would have used Adon, which is the, the human version of Adonai, or what they are meant to be. And of course, masters, I think there when it talks about that, even to the unjust and to the cruel and all of that, which is not what they are, see? They're not being that. They're being lords instead of uh, um, Adon, or in case of God, Adonai. So anyway, yeah, see, I love this. I love, I love this. And, and the angles that we come from when we're sharing is um, uh, that we are gaining angles uh, so that we can see this more clearly and so that we can hear it from another person, and then another person, then another person, so that we can realize that there is, there is this thing, and uh, and it pleases me to know that uh, we are, you know, that we could actually see this thing that I actually saw in in uh, the firstborn class, and then recognize, oh my Lord, this is, this is the. The one who is responsible, if you will, over the one who's going through the sufferings of Christ. I would never have known that unless, Sharon, if you hadn't helped me. And, um, you know, that to begin to, to see that word and to look it up and to say, well, what does it mean and why is it there? Because in, in the firstborn class, I knew why Elohim was there and he'd come in three persons. But when Abraham called him Adonai, I didn't understand it because it didn't match because I was seeing three as one with no differences. And then all of a sudden, it pulled one of them out, whichever it is that would be protecting. For example, if it's the Holy Spirit declaring Jesus instead of him declaring himself, you know, and... Um, and when I say protecting, I, a word that I've been using a little more is a word that, that Adonai is a caregiver. He's more than a caregiver, but he's a caregiver. But it's not like a protector that he would, uh, that Adonai is there to protect us from the sufferings of Christ. No, he's there primarily if you're in them and actually in the, and you know, the only way you can be in the sufferings of Christ is if you're in it in that spirit, in his spirit. Um, that's the only way. You don't, it's not the, you know, I don't care what sufferings we go through. It's not the sufferings of Christ if we don't have that spirit in that. And then, like I said, then Jehovah or Yahweh has to deal with us on another level, but not Adonai. Because he will, if he's going to deal, if he's going to deal with somebody, uh, it's not supposed to be um, that we're the problem, like like Sarah. Uh, it's supposed to be um, the evildoers, and he will. That's part of Adonai's responsibility within Elohim is that if you go through that by the Spirit of Christ and you, you, know, you pass to a certain juncture 
you know, and whatever that juncture, you know, you could talk about the quarter and how, how it ends, glory coming to God. Then his attention turns and he will severely deal with those evildoers. So, but that's, a, that's, another, that's another thing altogether. And I will say this, he doesn't deal with them just on the basis of vengeance. There, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a righteousness that is mixed into that. But we'll save that for another time. Really good. Okay, someone else. I have a scripture uh, similar to what you just said, shared, Randy. Okay. Uh, it's First Peter chapter four, verse one and two. It says, "For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God." And I just thought it was. Uh, Christ the husband was beckoning us into uh, Elohim and into the sufferings of Christ his heart was and uh, that we shouldn't live within the flesh or our fleshly mind so arm ourselves with the same spirit of Christ's mind his same heart and that we should um, live to the will of God and I felt like that was to the will of the heart of Elohim Amen. And the, uh, <clears throat> and the will of God in 1 Peter over and over and over again is that we would be with him, be with his spirit and nature in these sufferings, and, um, um, and that we would, uh, and the way that we be with him is not just, you know, two people talking, going, oh, you know, this is tough, and you know, yeah, I know what you feel. It's nothing like that. That can be self-pity. It is almost becoming part of Elohim, though we, we never will be God or anything like that. I'm not even suggesting such a thing. I'm talking about oneness, and we do believe in oneness. But being so with Jesus in that spirit, that that spirit comes out toward the evildoers instead of you know, attacking or, you know, hating or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and that's the will of God. That's what First Peter threw out is talking about when it talks about the will of God. Okay, that's good. Let me read one. I, I had to take a second here. Uh, I don't see, oh, Geraldine is on here. Geraldine, would you be willing to read yours? Yeah, um, it's very short. Elohim, Elohim, bearing up beneath one another. Loneliness, joy in descent, to lift a beloved one high, such glorious beauty. Suffer with me, with us, O bride of our heart. Try my sufferings, do not draw back. Hold my heart, for we hold yours. Take a step into this unknown. You will never believe the joy of giving glory to another. Such is our love. Amen. Amen. Well, if you don't have any more to comment on it, is it okay if I comment on, on it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, first of all, uh, she recognized that I did say Elohim, and most, uh, I, I think, I'm finding out most of you did, at least to some degree, understand that <clears throat> uh, because um, you, you really can't comprehend um, Adonai without comprehending the Trinity, without Elohim, the Trinity. The, because if you understand Elohim, meaning you understand let us means that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were one in this thing and one heart in it and one desire um, in this thing. And it doesn't say that they, you know, they say, hey, let's, let's, let's create great sea monsters or whatever, you know, and, you know, together, you know, no, this was the one, this was it. But, but to, but to 
um, understand Adonai, there has to be a basic understanding of Elohim. And then when one like Jesus comes down to the earth and he's in willing weakness and he's suffering, uh, but he's doing it in a right spirit and he's a lamb and he's laying down his life, um, that one of the other, the Father or the Holy Spirit, is his Adonai, and you begin to realize that. Anyway, so I, I you know, I really appreciate, I really appreciate how, um, you know, everyone actually did hear what I said, that we would uh, really pursue that. Now, word got out later, and it was about Adonai, but everyone that said something about Adonai so far has also emphasize uh, Elohim, and that's good. Okay, so um, she sent this to me a couple of days ago. First of all, it's almost like a poem, and I appreciate poetry on that front, and that front, or on this front, and that is <clears throat> that it, uh, so for some people, it's hard to understand poetry. For some people, it's hard to to get it unless you just write it in a paragraph. It's like, I need paragraphs, you know. And uh, so I, I really appreciated this. And um, she's not describing Adonai, and it begins, Elohim, Elohim. She's describing the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the oneness of nature and therefore the oneness of desire that we would have that nature also. So, uh, uh, bearing up underneath one another. Okay, so this is Elohim. This is so important to grasp the heart version of this instead of the theological version of this. They bear up one another constantly. It's the way they are. It's the way they live. It's the way they think. Okay, um, lowliness, that's, you know, they are, um, within them, it's almost like, but it's not this, but it's almost like they're fighting to see which one can be the lowest so that the other may be honored, okay? Now, they're not because they understand also their individual places of this, so that if it's their turn or under this circumstance, if this one you know goes down, then one of them's gonna one of them's gonna cover them, if you will. Um, <clears throat> joy in descent, meaning descending down. Joy in that, and um, you know that therein lies the biggest problem with people having a hard time with First Peter, and what he's really suggesting is. You know, because he talks about the glory, you know, the spirit of glory rests upon you and all this stuff. And you're going, you know, I don't get that. Um, but there is a, a, a joy in descent of being not the center of attention, of being um, uh, there and not noticed, but helping everyone else. Um, it's the way they are in nature, in nature. All right. Um, to lift a beloved one high. I mean, this is so nailing it, nailing Elohim and, and the, the, the flow as they function of the Trinity. Suffer with me, us, O bride of our heart. Okay, there goes the call. There's the call. They all three agree. Come join in this. And it won't be just, and let me make something clear, and I've said this many times before, but I used to read people's books or even knew some ministers, and they just talked about, oh, you know, suffering is, you know, the, it's, just the, it's just the best thing and all this kind of stuff. And it was like the, the goal is that we suffer or something like that. And that there was glory. God got glory just because we suffer. 
And that's not what's going on. That's not, Peter's not teaching that at all. He's teaching um, being, you know, like, come, you know, come be with us, me, Elohim, me, one, me, us, three, same person, Elohim, uh, in this spirit and way of suffering that can, that can literally, if their hearts will turn, can, can save your enemies and, and you can love your enemies. And so it's not, the suffering is the externals of it, the internal, and that's what it has to be. The internal of it has to be this spirit and nature that is Christ that we call the lamb, but it's God, which is love, three in one. God is love. Jesus isn't love. The Father isn't love. The Holy Spirit isn't love. God, Elohim, is love. And that's because that's spirit. And so, um, in that sense, you're never alone in the, in the sufferings. You're very much wrapped up in Elohim. You have the sacrifice going on in you, which is Christ. And you have probably, well, you have the, the, the Father, which is being glorified by that sacrifice, but he's, he's watching the whole thing. And, and the Holy Spirit many times is functioning as the, um, as the Adonai, but those are all reversible depending on what, what who, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Try my sufferings, still talking to the bride. Do not draw back. Hold my heart, for we hold yours. Hold my heart. If we, don't under, if we just understand this as doctrine and, well, I, I don't get what you're asking. Or, well, first of all, I'm not asking it. And second of all, then you don't get what Peter's asking, but that's okay. <clears throat> Find out from the Lord what the Lord is asking. Because it's not, it's not just a bunch of suffering and that's what we want to do and, you know, and God will be happy as long as we're hurting or some dumb thing like that. <clears throat> um, take a step into this unknown. I mean, this, this is incredible. Every, every line. You will never believe the joy of giving glory to another such is our love that's just uh, that's just wonderful just wonderful and may the lord breathe those things into us praise god i don't know what time is it getting late got anybody else i'd like to hear I, i'm really blessed by your sharing anyone else Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I uh, I was just noticing how Elohim is just all over the first chapters of Genesis, almost in every verse there. Um, just how it's just like he's all about this whole process of making man in his image. Yes. And at first Peter, um, you know, I just mentioned the fact that, you know, that these different members of God had are very present there in First Peter. And I was just noticing that that's it's the same thing. They're just they're making the whole process of the sufferings of Christ. Of course, is about us being formed in His image, and um, and that's what they're all about. And all throughout First Peter, just that process, each one of them, Peter names them off and, and talks about what they're doing in regard to that process. Amen. Yeah, and you're right. It's just, it's, you know, in the beginning was Elohim, and we have no other name mentioned. And then when they decide, when they express their heart, it's, we want man in our image. We're making all of this for them, but we want them in our image so it won't be about them in their hearts. It'll be about us. Exactly what that poem said that Geraldine wrote. Amen. Anybody else?
Okay, it's getting a little late. Uh, let me go through <clears throat> a few fictitious things, okay? So let's take these little things that I have here. This is um, Samson. And um, <clears throat> so he's got all this strength and he's got all this power and it's all given of God. And he all uses it for himself and to show off his strength and all this kind of stuff. But then he's finally defeated by weakness. <laughs> and in that weakness, he, is, he has his eyes put out and his hair cut and his strength gone and all that stuff. And so then he's, he's in a, a big arena where all of the chief of the, the Philistines are there gloating and, you know, just, you know, in their strength and we're stronger and we're better and we're all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and he says, not give me back, let, you know, give me back. I mean, it's, it's the scripture says his hair grew, but he says to the Lord, you, Adonai, if you will, I don't know, I haven't looked it up, but you can see maybe the flow. You give me strength just one more time for my death. And the scripture says in his death, he destroyed more Philistines than he did in his strength, if you will. Okay, I got a, I got a couple of these up here. Um, <clears throat> You got David and Goliath, and you know, all the strength is mocking him, his brothers, and everybody saying, you know, uh, you're just a kid and you're too small. And David's just saying, look, I, you know, I've got God with me. Well, what if that's Adonai? What if that's, what if that's the confidence that he's not on his own, and, but he's not using this strength for himself, but to free others but to free all of Israel from a giant that's full of strength and so the Lord uses weakness and smallness to defeat great bigness story after story and then we've got Jesus Jesus carrying the cross. I don't know if you can, how well you can see the, any of these, but Jesus, especially with the shirt, uh, carrying the cross, and he stumbles and falls, and Simon comes to help him carry it, uh, as well as a guitar pick. And um, uh, so he's the son of God. He has all power. He can use that power at any time. And he, he is, uh, he through willing weakness, he takes himself all the way down to a criminal, to a heretic, to an outcast and everything. And so he's, he's trying to carry this cross and he could easily, you know, obliterate this cross and everybody that's trying to give it to him is trying to carry this cross. But God made him physically weak, allow, allowed it through the sufferings, through them beating him and doing all this stuff where he couldn't take it. And just some stranger, just some, you, you need help, you know, you, uh, you, it's, it can be hard on people with pride to have some lowly person, well, that makes me look even lower than them, help him take that cross and get it set up so he could die on it. And um, like I said, it doesn't, um, the scriptures in the New Testament don't use those names, so we, we don't know for sure uh, in the New Testament what they are, but that there is this pattern of suffering, and there is this pattern of weakness, and there's this pattern of lowliness, and there's this pattern of getting or being with the Lord. You have, you have David who, he had been with the Lord, but he's weak looking and mocked and everything else because he's just a kid and how can he do it? We, we're big, strong men and this kind of thing. But he has confidence, if you will, in Adonai. Well, let's just say God then. And, and so God is with him. On the other hand, um, you have um, Jesus and you have Samson now who was strong and knew strength and knew victory and all that kind of stuff. 
And now all he wants is, is just one more death. One more death. That if I'll go down into death, my enemies will be dealt with. Anyway, I'm sure there's holes in all of that because I just thought of doing that. But, but there is the truth of what Abraham has begun to discover in the firstborn class, which we're in tonight, in um, Genesis 18 and verse 3, where, for the, where he calls him Adonai in a right spirit for the first time. Now, we, what we're going to do is we will deal with those scriptures more in Genesis as time comes. But there is, um, there is, and I'm just not sure when we're going to get to it, there is a time when we're going to go through a bunch of scriptures that are, that are mind-blowing, that show Elohim and they show who the Adonai becomes and how it happens. And there's nothing better. Randy talking and Gavin, even all of us sharing. That's great. I love it. I love it. But there's nothing better than to look straight into the scriptures and go, that is undeniable. That's, I don't know if it'll be next week or not, but that's what I want us to do now, next, as soon as we can, to, do, to get into those scriptures. So, all right. Love you. Father, just, just continue to open our hearts and open our eyes. And Lord, help us to quit holding on to old concepts because uh, we'll never see these concepts if they truly are yours unless we let go of what we think is right. And, and if we can just open up, we don't have to give up. We don't have to, Father, we just have to open up and say, Lord, if there's anything true in this, show it to me. Father, and just help us to all all seek more deeply what it is that you created us for. And I'm not talking about on the earth and jobs and life like that. That you might be satisfied. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you.